Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, we thank you for saving our soul. Father God, we ask you today to give us understanding and help us to apply the word to our lives. Father God, we ask you to bless the ones that are hearing it and bless the ones that are reading it. Father God, we ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to pour out his wisdom and knowledge on us while we're reading or listening to this devotional. Uh, Father God, we ask you to get the increase while I get the decrease in Jesus' mighty name. And Father God, also, please help me to teach in the spirit and not in the flesh in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So every Sunday we have a new verse, a new memory verse, and um, it's at the top of the devotional. Um, in the devotional bio, it will be a link for this. So you can um, look at the devotional on there or it could be it's listed in the bio. Okay, so the memory verse of the week is John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus said to her, on the resurrection of life, whoever believes in me will live, even though they die. Verse of the day, Luke 8 and 49. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, Jairus the synagogue's leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Subject, removing all the unbelief. Christian truths, I'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like. I'm believing God. I'm not bothered by the tricks of the enemy. I'm strong. I'm waiting. It's sometimes hard to deal with bad news. Honestly, I, I remember the last time I, I heard terrible news. It, it seemed as if everything had frozen. My ears seemed to have stopped listening. I was so frozen in time. It seemed the more the person spoke, it seemed like my body had gone rock hard. And no matter how hard I tried to listen, I couldn't hear. And the hair on the back of my neck just stood up. The bad news is bad news is tough to deal with. And it's no right or wrong way to accept it and to hear it. All we can do is when we get bad news is depend on Jesus to help us separate what we need to hear. And to be honest, it seems like prayer even drifts from us when we are in this state. Today, the verse is about a man named Jars. He had a daughter. He had came to Jesus to seek healing for his daughter. He pleaded with Jesus to come home with him. And he said, my daughter is 12 years old and was dying. Jesus didn't say anything. He followed him out the door towards his home. On the way there, he kept getting stopped. And one of the situations that stopped him was a lady that was bleeding. She believed if she could just touch Jesus, she would be made whole. When we believe, this is one way to show our love for him. When we trust in him. And both these people trusted in Jesus for what they needed from him. Verse 50, but when Jesus heard what had happened, he told Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith, she will be healed. Jesus knew that when Jairus was told his daughter was dead, his faith might have been became wavy. But we have to stand on the Lord. We have to stand on that. He will heal and touch and bring forth everything we need. So Jesus continued to his home. Jesus will keep going and moving in our life as long as we trust the process. Imagine as Jairus relied, truly relied on the synagogue's leader that said, your daughter is dead. He would have missed out on the blessing believing in a man. Jesus pressed on even when Jar Lazarus died. He pressed on. He told them to remove the stone. He did. They did. And he commanded him to come out. Jesus is asking us today to come out amongst the ones that who are doubting him. Because when we are surrounded around people who doubt, we start to doubt because the spirit of doubt and unbelief moves fast from one person to another person, just like confusion. Verse 51, and they arrived at the house and Jesus let anyone go. He wouldn't let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing, but he said, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. See, this confirmed what the Holy Spirit just said. He wanted the people who were weeping out of their home. He wanted those who were filled with doubt out of their home. When you are surrounded with people who are filled with disbelief, they will always have you second-guessing God, and you can't second-guess God. We must stand. Jesus told them what they sh couldn't see. Jesus is speaking to us today. He's saying, you're successful you're filled with joy. You're free from this and that, but we must accept it. Do you accept what Jesus is saying to you? Verse 53 and 55 through 55 says, says this, but the crowd laughed at him because all knew she had died. Then Jesus told, took her by, by the hand and said to, said in a loud voice, my child, get up. 
And at this moment, her life returned and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus stood, told them to give her something to eat. Jesus looked at the crowd and told them to leave. He, he went to the child and told her to get up. We are allowing the enemy to beat us down with his words. We are allowing the enemy to take over situations that he shouldn't be in at all because we allow him to speak in our ears. That's why we must be careful of who we speak to and who we let say words to us. Today, remember whose words have, remember words have attachments. And if we aren't careful, those words can cause us to have unbelief and that we can't shake. Don't allow what people speak to you to control you mentally. Speak against the schemes and traps of the enemy. God wants us to be prepared for any and everything the enemy tries to do to us. Don't allow the enemy to trick you with this, his words and stand strong in God's word and nor, and don't ignore me and stay strong in the Lord. Prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. We want to start off by thanking you and allowing, allowing us to hear the word and dwell in your presence. Lord, we want to humble our, ourselves and submit to you. We want to be more like you, Lord. Help us not to lose our trust in you because of what we see. Lord, help us to stand firm in you. Lord, a lot of times we allow situations and people to fluctuate our beliefs in you and what you can do in our life. And we ask you to help us be strong. We ask you to help us to stay firm and unmovable in, in you. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I miss said something at the bottom of the devotional. It said this, hold on, let me redo this real quick. So this ends removing all the unbelief. I wanted to re-say this right quick. God wants us to be prepared for any and everything the enemy tries to do us, do to us. Don't allow the enemy to trick you with his words. Stand strong in God's word and don't ignore him and stay strong in the Lord. I miss said that and I wanted to go back and um, say that the right way. So a lot of times when we have bad situations come, we oftentimes focus on the bad. Um, and it's hard not to focus on the bad, to be honest, because um, it's there and um, it's sometimes there, it's placed there to shake us. It's placed there to make us feel that this situation is bigger than God and it's not. When Jesus met, uh, I think his name is pronounced as Jairus, but it, Jairus, but it might be pronounced on um, Javis, but I'm going to go with Jairus. When he first got an encounter with Jairus, Jairus told him, you know, hey, my my daughter um, is dead. My daughter's sick. Can you, come, can you come see about her? And Jesus was very glad to go with him. Let's take our Bible and actually look at that chapter. If you have your Bible, go to Luke 8. I want to actually read it with you. Because for me, this, this story, if you have time, go to Luke 8 on your spirit time and read the whole chapter. The whole chapter is filled with so much uh, symbolic and so much things in there that you could take and apply to your life. Um, so if you have time on your busy schedule today, please read Luke 8. So and when I get to Luke 8, I'm going to go ahead and start reading um, because I've talked enough. Okay. I'm trying to make sure. Okay. So we're going to start at the beginning of the story. It's going to be Luke 8 and 40. On the other side of the lake, the crowd welcomed Jesus because they had been waiting for him. Verse 41, the man named Jairus, the leader of the local synagogues, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come with him. 42, his only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. As Jesus went with him, he was surrounded by the crowd. A woman in the crowd had suffered 12 years with constant bleeding. The number 12 is symbolic. And she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe. Immediately, her, ble her bleeding stopped. We're going back to devotional here. Some of us don't want to reach out to Jesus. We don't want to reach out with just a simple cry and say, Jesus, help me. This woman took her time and she she crawled to jesus and she touched the bottom of his robe she didn't want to touch him completely she just touched a fringe that's hanging off his robe if you go back in leviticus and study somewhere in leviticus when a woman's 
on our menstrual she she's supposed to be separate she she let's let's look at that real quick so we can understand the basis of why um trying to get it pulled up so y'all can understand why this woman touched just the fringe of his of his robe because um sorry my internet is acting slow Okay, Leviticus 15.25, if a woman has a discharge of blood or many days, not at this time of her menstrual impurity, or if she has a discharge beyond the time of impurity, this is her, sorry, mis mistaken words, all the days of this charge, she shall continue in uncleanness, as in these days of her impurity, she shall be unclean. When a woman or anyone is unclean in that day, they, they supposed to be separate. So this woman took the chance of touching the fringe of Jesus' robe or his gown. He, she, she touched the fringe of it. She reached out beyond her sickness, beyond her ability to be away from him. She still reached out. And the only thing we have to do is cry out to him. And we won't even do that. This, this woman knew in her mind that if I could just touch him, I know my sickness would go away. It, 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 sometimes... You, if you if you ever been desperate and you, you had a cold, you like if I could just get to Walgreens and get the medicine, I'm good. If I could just get to the doctor and he gives me uh, my steroid shot, I'm good. If I could just get to the hospital and they put me under, you know, under the casket and they can see something's wrong with me. If I if I can, 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 we have to understand that we have to start believing in God like this woman did. She said, I'm going to touch his robe and I'm going to be made hold. We have to start believing that our words have power. The way we move shows what we believe in. She believed that if she touched him, she could get free. Okay. So Jesus said in verse 45, I'm going to skip here. We're going to skip along. We're going to go to verse 45. She said, he said, who touched me? And so everyone denied it. Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing against you. But Jesus said, no, someone deliberately touched me for I felt healing power go out of me. When the woman realized that she could not hide, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd, mind you, Jar's daughter still waiting. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him. And she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said, your faith is made whole. Go in peace. While this is going on, as he is walking through the crowd, time is building up. So at the same time, this man had to believe that as he's talking to this woman, my time with my daughter could be, could be lost. Because he's talking to this woman. He never got out of character. And he never said he got out of character. Some of us, when we have to wait on God, we get out of character. We, we start fussing. We start being wavering in, in our belief that he could heal us or he could deliver us from a situation. We get so shaky, but he stood there and he waited. So he could talk to this woman and tell her, you can go in peace. You're healed. I know for me, it, it probably would have been impossible, which I don't have any kids. It would have been impossible for me to stand there and watch him talk to this woman. I would have been like, I came here first, Jesus. Can you please go with me? I need you desperately. But he stood there. He waited. Because he knew he knew also if he got Jesus to his house, that his daughter would be okay. Okay? So we're going to move all the way down here to verse 49. It says, while he was still speaking to a messenger, arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of synagogues, he told him, your daughter's dead. There's no use of troubling the teacher now. Verse 50, and Jesus heard what happened. To, to what happened. He said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have faith and she will be healed. See, even when the man came and said, hey, your daughter's dead. Don't worry about it. Jesus said, listen to me. I, I'm telling you that. Have faith. You will be healed. See, sometimes we believe what our friends say. Oh, girl, you got to get over that. You know that that's not going to work out for you. But God's sitting here telling you every day. You have peace. You have joy. I believe in you. This is going to happen. This is going to move. Keep study. Keep reading your word. 
keep praying, keep meditating, keep fasting, keep believing in me, keep following me, don't lose faith. But we hear what our friends say, we hear what the enemy tells us, and we look at what's in front of us. So we don't walk by faith, we don't walk by sight, we don't do none of that. Because we listening to what the enemy swallow, or we listening to what we allow the enemy to tell us. We have to start telling the enemy, I rebuke you. You're not gonna tell me I can't have this. You're not gonna tell me I'm not gonna win. You're not gonna tell me I'm not gonna be healed. You're not gonna tell me that I'm not gonna be free from these addictions and these and these different uh bounds and yokes that's in my life. You're not gonna tell me any of that. I rebuke you. So we have to be like this man that kept pushing forward to his house. Let's go on this. Let's go on to verse 32. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing. He says, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him because they all knew she was dead. Then Jesus took her by her hand and said in a loud voice, a child, get up. At that moment, her life returned and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them, told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed, but Jesus assisted that they not tell anyone what happened. You see what would happen if Jarvis had just had an angry moment and start yelling at Jesus and say, I told you I needed you first. I've been waiting. And you stop and you, you, you healed her. You allow her to touch you and you, you spoke to her. But I was first. But no, he stood there. He waited. Sometimes we have to stand and wait. Sometimes we have we can't say, oh, this person got a blessing. I I've been praying longer than them, but it wasn't your time. It's their time. Oh, oh, why why does this keep happening to me? What I thought this was my season. What about me? What about me? No, we we, we must understand that we have to be happy when someone is happy. We must cry when someone is crying. We must pray for others and be strong for others and immovable for others and, and be intercessors for other people's lives and not just worry about ourselves and jars and worry about his situation he stood there waiting for jesus to do what he had to do he waited for the woman to get the message from jesus he he heard even what the man said he ignored what even what the man said and he was like okay well keep pushing forward when he got to his house people was weeping and crying and jesus was like be quiet and, and as all this is going on Jarvis is still standing there looking like, I know he's still going to do this because I believe in him. I found him. I believe in him. I know he's going to do this. See, that's the type of faith we got to have that no matter how long it takes him, we know he's going to do it. No matter how much we don't have, we know he's going to provide. We know that even in our darkest hurt moment that he's going to fix it. Because we know our God takes care of us. And some of us miss that valid point. That's why some of us miss our blessing because we're too busy complaining about what others have. And we're too, too busy listening to what the enemy pounds into our ears. And that's what the enemy's going to do. He's going to keep pounding stuff and throwing stuff at us and having people come our way and have a bunch of people our way. That's why we got to remove people in our life that is no good, that is negative. Because those people are going to continue to weigh you down. And if you're not strong enough in the Lord, you allow their negative words and the things they say to weigh you down. Don't allow the things of others and the things people say to you to weigh you down. We must learn that in our season, wherever season we end, we are walking with God. Whether it's a drought season, whether it's a a uh, financial season, whether it's a lonely season, whatever season you're in, you're walking in this with Jesus. Because if you're doing it by yourself, if you're waking up every morning, you're not reading your word, you're not praying, you're not meditating, you're not walking in Jesus, you're walking in your own strength. And I'm telling you, you're going to always fail because the enemy is going to come at you so hard. The enemy is not going to stop coming at us. Just because you give your life to God, Jesus, uh, the enemy is not going to stop coming at you. Some people say, oh, the enemy comes at his come at people he has in his hands less. He comes after anybody. The enemy don't care. He don't care if you worship him. You're still going to have bad luck. You can still, Not bad luck, but you're going to have bad things happen. You could be worshiping Jesus. You can be doing whatever you want, doing everything right according to God's will. You still have the enemy come after you. The enemy doesn't care who he bothers. He doesn't care. 
He just cares about tearing people down mentally and emotionally so far down that they're so paralyzed in the spirit that they can't move. But Jesus is trying to tell you, listen to the Holy Spirit so he can break the chains that you're in. Because as long as you're sitting there paralyzed in the spirit, you're going to always be in doubt. You're going to always have a problem. We have to figure out what we're doing in our, our spiritual walk. The year is ending soon. And we don't know when the Lord's coming back. And it doesn't mean because the, Lord, the year is ending that the Lord's coming back. That doesn't mean that it could. I don't know. No one knows. It says it in the word. But we must be ready at all times. And we must stay strong at all times. And we must give ourselves up to God and yield to him at all times. Listen to him when he speaks. He tells you what's going on. It's just if we slow down and hear him. Remove the doubt that's in your life. Remove the people that's doubtful in your life. I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow. Remember to send to a family member or a friend. Remember that the memory verse, the verse of the day, the reference, the further reading, the links to the bio, the links to the devotionals will be in the, in the bio as well. Have a blessed day. Thank you.